Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome Maggie. Welcome to the last monthly money update. Let's talk about money video of the year. I guess this isn't the last let's talk about money because I have one more coming, but wow, the last monthly money update of the year is here for December. And yeah, I would be letting you guys down if I didn't have a juicy, stressed out, you know, <laughs> my usual, but like on steroids type of monthly money update. So without further ado, let's start. So I just sat down and I did all of my budgeting kind of thing. I'm like a backwards budgeter. <laughs> so I reviewed all of my finances and got ready to film this video. I've been working on my finances, I would say today for like about an hour. So I'm really ready to dive in, talk about everything, talk about everything that I've spent, any savings and just how I'm kind of closing the year financially. I know December is a very stressful month financially for a lot of people. I am not alone out there, but just a forewarning that yes, this is going to be a more on the anxious side chat. So if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, yeah, welcome. We get super, super real and super honest about money here because I know I'm not the only one struggling and um, through my struggles, I hope that we can all learn something and learn how to thrive with money. Um, yeah, that's my goal. Okay, so I wrote everything down. I am like so organized this month and I wanted to get really organized, you know, now for the end of the year. One, because I'm feeling anxious. Whenever I'm anxious, you know, in any area of my life, I feel like getting organized is a really good way to help with the anxiety. So, you know, if I'm anxious, I like to clean my house. And when it comes to finances, when I'm anxious, I like to review everything. And I like to look at all of my accounts and see, okay, how am I doing? You know, is this anxiety founded or is it not justified? This month it's justified I spent so much money. So in this video, I want to talk about just like a little quick end of the year recap. Then I wanna talk about holiday spending and go in depth about how I'm feeling. Then we will go in depth into everything that I've spent and I've even categorized it and made it more organized for you guys. And then we'll talk about saving and putting money aside at the end of the video. So that's how things are gonna go down. Um, you can either check out the timestamps down below or sit back, relax, and let's talk about money. So it's the end of the year, and this is the time of year that a lot of people start feeling really motivated. And you know, we wanna set goals and we wanna look forward to the new year. Um, if you've been following along with my vlogs, you know that I've been having a bit of a hard time recently. I've really been having a hard time like at work and just mentally. Um, and that's just kind of led into this feeling of like bleh in my life where I don't really feel super motivated for the new year. I'm not feeling like my normal self this time of year where my normal self would be like setting a lot of goals and really knowing what I want. And right now I just feel very lost and confused. And I know it's just a calendar switch, right? Like the year switches, but nothing else really changed, but it is nice to have those goals you know, going into the year, I had a lot of goals last year that I want to reflect on and see if I've accomplished them. And I'm going to do that in its own video. And my hope is that by reflecting on my previous goals, that will help me digest everything. And then I'll feel better and in a better mindset to set goals looking forward. So I haven't done any of that yet, but I promise I will take you guys along with me. I hope it's okay with you. I'm like so silly, but I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not uploading it right on January 1st, let's say right at the beginning of the year. So like, is it still valid? But I know you guys just like these money monthly, monthly money chats. So yeah, I just need to take that pressure off of myself. But that is what's up if you guys are wondering. I know I got a lot of questions on Instagram about like, what are my goals for the next year? I don't know yet, but as I figure them out, you guys will be the first to know, I promise. So this is what I wrote down, you guys. The good news in general for how I'm feeling right now, the good news is that I'm not going to be in debt after this month, so that's great. I have enough to pay off my credit cards. I kind of saved in advance for this month, so in that sense, it's not so bad. The bad news, however, is there's pretty much no money going into savings, which doesn't feel like the best way to be closing off the year. Like, I don't feel like I'm starting January very strong, which gives me a lot of stress but at the same time, it's like a clean slate. So it just kind of depends how you look at it. 
Let's get into everyone's favorite part now, which is the how much you spent. Remember you guys, I love when you comment down below your most expensive or your favorite purchase of the month. So comment that down below right now. What did you spend the most money on or what was your favorite purchase? Like you feel like you got a really good deal on this month. Comment down one or the other or both. So I'm gonna open up my laptop and check out the screen right now because I wanna show you guys this new method that I started, which is to actually look on a spreadsheet at all of my finances that I spent kind of after the fact. So I exported my credit card statements and I put them into an Excel folder. And what this did was allow me to really look at my statements and rather just go through it like a list, I can kind of categorize and see like where am I spending the most money. So we'll see how this goes. What I'm hoping is that by looking at things more in depth after the fact will help me budget more before the fact if that makes sense so you guys who know me you know i hate budgeting like i can't do it i can't stick to a budget but i'll never stop trying <laughs> um so i'm hoping that this kind of after the fact system will help me then are you gonna jump or no <laughs> um, i'm hoping this after the fact system will help me before the fact Okay, so rather than run through the list like I normally do of everything that I spent, I am going to tell you guys the categories um, and how much I spent for each category and then I will tell you guys like my highlight purchases, my biggest purchases or my most shocking. So the categories are ski and winter equipment. Now this is like a one time only category. I spent so much money getting ready for winter this year because I bought a new winter coat, I bought new winter boots, I bought a whole bunch of ski equipment and skiing is so expensive. And this is not even including the skis themselves, okay you guys? So <laughs> this year on ski and winter stuff, I spent $1,400. And I don't even think that includes my boots because they were on a previous statement. So let's say $1,500 in total I spent getting ready for winter and for skiing. And you know, it's not necessarily that I regret these purchases, it's just I kind of wish that I had done it more slowly leading up to the winter because this is so much money to have on my credit card statement right now. Like $1,400 is a lot. Now this next one I am kicking myself about, this is the eating out category. I spent $500 eating out this month, $500, that's a lot. And like, I didn't go out that much or for like anything super memorable, but yeah. So the highlights in there was I spent $100 on drinks at this like fancy bar in Montreal. I got, I think I was with my boyfriend, I got, we each got two drinks, a shot. We each got two drinks, a shot, and an appetizer. And that with tip came out to $100. Like that is so expensive. Nights out are getting crazy. And date night is crazy. And that was just the drinks. That wasn't even dinner, okay? Crazy. I also spent $70 on dinner and drinks. And that just goes to show how like the variation in price, like if you go somewhere fancy, it's $100 just for drinks. And if you go somewhere on the lower end, it's $70 for dinner and drinks. So you gotta pick and choose. <laughs> I need a quick water break. It is so peaceful at my mom's right now. It's so nice. Like everything's blue and green in her living room. And I just have like Maggie sleeping on my feet. It's so nice. And the thing I love about filming these videos is like as I talk and as I express everything that I spent, it's like all this weight comes off of me. And it's not that I'm justifying my purchases necessarily, but talking it out and speaking it out loud is just like, okay, you know, I can handle this. Like there were reasons why I did this. I was living my life, right? And so it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. So I'm already feeling so much better. And I just wanna remind you guys, like even if you don't broadcast your finances to the world on YouTube, like these are conversations you can have with your friends. And I feel like talking about finances with your friends is such a good idea and it, one, it helps create really strong friendships, but two, it's that same feeling where as you talk about it, you can let some of this stress off of your chest and you can motivate and encourage your friends as well. Okay, now for the famous gifts section. I spent $674 on gifts. That's a lot when you think that it's only for like four people. So it was my mom, my dad, but my dad's gift was free. <laughs> I gave him True Earth laundry strips because I love them and he loves them and I received a whole bunch. So I gave him some. 
Okay, so it was my mom, my boyfriend, my brother, and my sister. Four people, I spent nearly $700. Insane. I calculated how much I spent on groceries, but I don't think it's right. It says I only spent $274, but I think I missed some, so that's not right, but you know, groceries, like it is what it is. Now, for myself, I spent $700. Like, bitch, on what? On what did I buy? I bought leather pants for $80 and surprise, now we're in lockdown, can't even wear the pants. I, I don't even know what this is made up of. Let me go through. Okay, I bought some stuff from Lululemon. That was worth it. Honestly, it was worth it. Black Friday. The pants, it's like, ugh. What else did I include with this? Okay, I spent $100 for a deposit on fitness coaching. I spent $27 on like an ebook, which was like not, like I shouldn't have bought that. Um, what else did I buy? Okay, $150 at Ikea. That was a big one. Yeah. You know, it's just like all this stuff just adds up. It's crazy. Oh, I also included in this $130 on an artificial Christmas tree. So like, it's all these things that you can justify, but they just add up so quickly, like $700 in one month. It's, it's too much and I need to stop that. I need to stop. It also goes to show that like, I'm stressed out about the gifting, but I spent more on myself this month than I did on gifting. So gifting maybe wasn't even the problem. It's, it's me the problem, surprise, surprise. I calculated how much I spent on gas for the first time this month. I've never added up how much I spent on gas because I like to pretend that it doesn't exist because I hate, hate, hate buying gas. Um, I spent $150 on gas, which isn't so bad, but it's also, it's like, it's still a lot of money. Somebody commented on my car video and was like, if you hate buying gas, why didn't you get an electric car? And I'm like, because electric cars would have cost like $50,000 more than what I spent on my car, maybe even more, like, I don't know. But yeah, I hate buying gas and whenever I can afford an electric car, that will be the move. Okay, I spent $140 on Maggie, which is really not bad. I had to buy some food and some supplies for her from the pet store, so $140 on my dog. Um, okay, <laughs> here's the next one. Uh, $1,777 $1, on fitness this month. What? Okay, let me break it down. I purchased, I pre-purchased a gym pass for the whole year because if I did, I got like this insane Black Friday rate. So that was $1,200. So $1,200 of this is, you know, prepaid for the full year. It's okay, it is what it is. The additional $500 was yoga classes and spin classes. $500 in one month for yoga classes and spin classes. Bitch, who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? This is despicable. It's absolutely despicable and I will not, this is, I cannot, like, you know, it's like, oh, it's for my fitness, whatever, $500. And I didn't realize it was this much until I added it up. Like, holy shit, holy shit. Anyway, the last thing you guys that I spent a bunch of money on was COVID. I spent $300 getting COVID tests this month because we had some COVID scares. And you know, you can't really argue against having to take a COVID test, but you can admit that the prices are just absolutely astronomical. I know some Americans are gonna comment and be like, what the F, you spent that much on COVID tests? Yes, that is how much it costs in Canada if you go private because the public is just like totally burnt out. You can't get any tests. And I wanted to see my family for Christmas that's how much it cost, $300. That was for two tests, $300. <sighs> okay, I know I am talking so much, you guys. So let's get to the point, shall we? My Amex is the highest it's ever been. I'm having deja vu because I think I've said that before, but this is even higher, okay? My American Express is owing $5,163. Like, ouch, just ouch, okay? My MasterCard's not so bad, 600 bucks. We can deal with that, that's okay. But in total, that is nearly $6,000 that I am owing on my credit cards. Bitch, do I have $6,000? No, 
No. <laughs> well, I do. The good news is all throughout the month, I saved up for this. I knew I was gonna have an expensive credit card bill because of the gifting, because of the ski stuff, all of that. I knew it was coming. So I did save up a little over $6,000 to pay off my credit cards. So that is why, like at the beginning of the video, I mentioned I'm not going to go into debt this month for my credit cards. <sighs> now, does it make it less stressful? No, because I was really hoping that with all of that money that I'd been saving, I would not quite reach the amount, you know what I mean? So this month, I didn't refill my one month ahead account, which sucks. Like I've, it's been months that I always refill it and this month I didn't, which means that I don't have my rent pre-saved for the next month. Like that's not a good feeling. Um, anyways, I was looking at my American Express and I have quite a bit of points that I have accumulated and you can actually use points to pay off your statement balance. So I calculated it and if I wanted to use points, I could contribute $750 towards my statement balance, which is pretty cool. I really thought about it. I first I was like, yes, for sure I'm going to do this. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not going to. I don't want to feel like I'm bailing myself out because I would like for my credit card points to be a reward kind of thing and like a pleasant surprise. So if down the line I want to take a trip, I can have my credit card points pay off my airfare and be able to go on a trip that maybe I otherwise wouldn't be able to afford. I did that once before. I paid for my plane tickets to Indiana with points and it was such a relief just knowing that I'm saving like $500 from points it made the trip more enjoyable because i wasn't as tight with money because i didn't have to pay for my flight so i've decided i'm not going to use the points but it is an option and if i was a little more desperate and i wanted to really avoid going into debt this month um that is something i could do so i wanted to share that with you guys in case you guys are maybe struggling you spent too much money this month um check out your credit card points system and see if that is an option to help pay down your balance so all of that being said, I have all of the money that I need to pay off my credit cards in my saving to spend account. So I have a second checking account where I move all of my money to um, in order to pay off my credit cards. That's where I was putting all of my money all throughout the month and now I am going to watch it vanish <laughs> onto my credit cards. So I'm gonna go pay that off on my phone and I'll be right back. Okay, so my credit cards are paid off. <laughs> it feels good but it doesn't feel good just looking at like the rest of my monthly savings and being like, ooh, okay. So in the money that I had put aside to pay off my credit cards, I have $400 left. So I think what I'm gonna do is use that money and put that towards my one month ahead because my rent is due in a couple of days. So <laughs> the money's gotta come from somewhere. So I'm gonna use that. To, so I'm gonna use the $400 that are left to put towards my rent. Speaking of rent, I wanted to let you guys know, um, two other monthly expenses for this month were hydro. So that is like my electricity, my hot water was $150 that I had to pay earlier in the month. Um, and my rent is always 1,510 and that is rent and my indoor parking space. So that expense is coming up in a couple of days, like I said. Um, other expenses are my phone bill. My phone bill was more expensive because I went to the States this month and I had to pay roaming charges. So my phone bill is usually $80 and this month it was 150, which is so ouch, so ouch, yeah. <sighs> okay, we're done talking about <laughs> spending. Um, so I wanna close up this video with my savings. So the one good news and the thing that I am very proud of is I promised myself this year, any money that I receive for Christmas, I am going to put towards my retirement account because it's almost the end of the year and we have until a certain day in Canada to contribute to our retirement and then we receive a kickback from the government when we file our taxes. So I love getting money back at tax time. And I also am trying to offset anything that I owe from my YouTube earnings. So that is why I'm so obsessed with my RSP right now, just to not have any surprises at tax time because I do have this like self-employed element to uh, my income. So I'm obsessed with my RSP and I'm just filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. So I received about $500 in gift money from my dad and my grandma, which is so generous. So all of that will be going towards my RSP. 
Um, I already deposited some of the cash the other day, and once all of that is done, I'll be transferring over to my RSP, which is with Wealth Simple. Um, so that feels really good. So that'll be done in the next few days, and that is something that I'm proud of. You know, it's so tempting when you get gift money to be like, okay, let's go to the mall. But after everything I just spent and everything I spent on others and everything I spent on myself, I think I'm good. And I can confidently say there's nothing really that I want right now. Like I'm not craving anything or desiring anything. I think I'm just such in a state of shock and I'm like, okay, you're not allowed to desire anything except like good financial habits for the new year. So that's a wrap you guys. I will put $500 into my RSP, no money into the rest of my savings accounts, which are, what are they? I have investment accounts. I have stock trading accounts, which are tax-free savings accounts. Um, I have an emergency fund and I have car savings. All of those I'm not touching this month, but hopefully starting next month, um, starting in the new year, we can get things going a little better. So I'm officially exhausted. <laughs> I am tired of thinking about money and I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to comment down below either your best or your most expensive purchase of the month. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you all in my next video. Bye.